everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. Today I'm going to be doing another violin review and it is another Fiddler Man violin review. In total I'm going to be reviewing all six of the Fiddler Man's own brand or own series of violins. So there'll be six video reviews along with three comparison video reviews as well. All of these review videos and comparison videos will be linked underneath this video as and when they are available in the coming weeks. going to be reviewing today is this one. It is the Fiddler Man Concert Violin and this is priced at 399 US dollars and this sits at number three in the range. So this is the third one up in the Fiddler Man's own series of violins. <laughs> technical specs and what's in the case, this is exactly like the others, so they all come playable out the box. There's nothing for you to, to, to be setting up, there's nothing for you to be doing. The only thing you will have to do out the box is give it just a quick little tune. They kind of come almost pre-tuned before you get them, but obviously with the travel and the shipping, there will just be a little bit of tuning that you'll have to do, no more than you'd have to do each time you play the violin anyway, since it is the nature of the violin. And the only other thing you'll have to do is just apply rosin to the bow to get that going. I'll have some video footage coming up on the screen where you can see what the case looks like, how it arrives in the case, you know, when you open up the box so you can see how it's all packed up and everything and all the accessories that come in the case. And you'll also get the Fiddler Man bow as well, which is this one. And this is the Fiddler Man's custom arch and weight distribution bow with high quality Siberian horse hair, extremely durable carbon fiber so it's a carbon fiber bow and I have to say it's a very nice bow uh, it, it, it certainly suits the level of the violin it seems really quite nicely weighted doesn't feel too heavy in any one particular area also it didn't take me too long to rosin up the bow from from scratch either which is a good thing usually with the cheaper bows and the synthetic horsehair it takes forever to put rosin on the bow you could sometimes be spending sort of a good 30 minutes applying rosin but with this a couple of minutes and we were good to go I will have some tech specs of this violin coming up on the screen now just to give you a little overview of, of what, what violin uh, comes with. If you want to have a look at the tech specs in more detail, I will put a direct link to the concert violin, this violin, underneath this video so you can go straight to the website and you can check out all the other bits and bobs that it comes with. This, this will just give you a quick overview for now. Okay, demo time. So before I play anything, I want to mention that I have done nothing with this violin. I haven't altered it or touched it in any way. All I have done is literally get the violin out of the box, give the strings a quick tune, apply rosin to the bow, and that is it. The same with the recording that you're going to hear. I am professionally recording this to give you the best sound possible, but I haven't touched the recording in any shape or form. So what you're going to hear from this video is exactly the sound of the violin. Also, once I've done all these video reviews, I'm going to be putting together a little kind of video performance montage where you will be able to hear all of the demo pieces that I have played side by side or back to back, starting with the, the entry level, the Fiddler Man's entry level violin, going all the way up to the highest violin. That way you'll be able to, to compare each of the violins as they kind of go up in price and up in level, which I think would be a really useful video for you for reference.
and opinions on this. Uh, first of all, it looks very nice. It feels well made. As I said with the, the predecessors before this, everything about it is really nice. The strings are nice. Um, we've got a Despial bridge, which is cut very nice, angled nicely. Peg box is fine. Uh, you've got a little bit of embellishment on the sides of the pegs here, almost like a, uh, like a maybe like a pearl inlay. The tuning of the peg box was was fine. It was really good actually. I did did have to tune um, one or two of the strings with with this before I used the fine tuners, and it felt safe and secure as the other ones. The overall difference, I think, as I'm reviewing more and more of the Fiddler Man violins, is that I find that the peg box on on all of them is really really good. The peg box on those really cheap violins that you get, I'm talking sort of, you know, less than $100, less than £100, that kind of thing. The peg boxes on them are just horrendous because they can't be bothered to, to cut them really. So the peg box is crucial because it's like the central hub of tuning. If the pegs aren't going to stay in tune, you're not going to be able to tune the violin. And I know so many of you ask me why the pegs are slipping and you can't get the peg in tune. You're going to have to keep using peg compound, this, that and the other. Well, that's what you get with those really nasty cheap violins. You don't get any of that with any of these Fiddler Man violins. The peg boxes have been very, very well cut on all of them, even the OB-1, which is the Fiddler Man entry level of violin. So, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed with, with the peg box on all of them. And finally, the main thing I noticed this, and I can see from my recording on my, my recording program just behind the camera there, that my word, this violin is a Loudon. It, it, there is so much power in this. I would say out of all six of the Fiddler Man violins, this is the loudest by far. And when I say loud, I guess I mean more powerful. I don't mean loud in a negative way by any stretch of the imagination, but my word, there is so much power in this. And I, I was noticing that as I was warming up, as, as I was tuning the violin just off camera, before I was about to make this review and I just wanted to see if I, I could push it really far and <laughs> I could push it really far. There was so much, the E string, I, I, I don't know what they've done, but the, the e, there's so much power coming from the E and there's so much power coming from the G. And in conclusion, who do I think this is for? So this sits in at number three in the series of Fiddler Mount Violin. So I think this would be suitable for a beginner, absolutely no problem there, because I think it's it's a good enough violin for a beginner. When when you start to hear the comparison reviews, you'll you'll tell you can easily tell that this is a good step up from the entry level violins. So this would be good for a beginner. I think this would be good for an intermediate player as well. In fact, I definitely think this would be aimed at uh, at an intermediate player as well. Maybe someone who who particularly wants to play solos because there is a lot of power and it is very loud and it is very punchy. You're going to be able to squeeze quite a lot more out of this violin as well. So definitely, I think this would be for an intermediate player. I think this would be a good one to upgrade to as well if you've got a very cheap kind of non-branded violin, sort of $50 or so, and you're looking to just sort of up upgrade to something a little bit better, uh, something with a nice sound, and again, something quite, particularly quite punchy, this would be a good one for you to upgrade to. I think this would be great for students as well, studying. However, I think if you were playing in a smaller ensemble, you might want to think twice about this one, in all honesty, because I think it is quite powerful and it is quite punchy. You don't want to be the, the one single violin that's cutting through the top of everybody else. So I think you could probably get away if you were playing in an orchestra where you had quite a large string section because you'd just fall in with all the others, you'd be one among a number. If you were playing with a smaller ensemble, so maybe something more of a chamber ensemble with maybe half a dozen or so violins, this might not be the best violin for that because I think it might just cut through, especially on the higher register, on the lower register. This would be more of a soloist vi violin or something where you're playing on your own, maybe not so much in, in a group because I don't think you're going to kind of blend into the background quite as much. And lastly, if you're watching this review and you don't know where to get started on the violin, you've never played the violin before and you, you, know, you, you want to get started, then why don't you check out my violin lessons 1 to 20, they're video lessons, they come with some free PDFs, they come with tutorial books and song books, I will have all of that information linked underneath the, this video coming up above me just here but those will get you started so if you are a complete beginner and you know absolutely nothing about 
about music, nothing about the violin, that's absolutely fine because those lessons are going to be for you. So thank you very much for watching, don't forget to check out all the other video reviews that I've done, I'll have them linked directly underneath this video. I hope you have enjoyed this video and it's been useful to you and I will see you in the next one. Bye!